This presentation is a supplement to our three ping pong ball launch videos. It gives a little bit of background, some high speed flash photographs of the ping pong ball, and then a little more technical detail. So initially, th this picture shows, well, all of these, a slightly earlier version. This is from the September 2015 OMSI Maker Fair. It's in Portland, Oregon. This was a preview <laughs> promotional shot. You can see in this one, our pressure chamber has the nylon rope wrapped around it for an extra safety measure that isn't visible in the other videos because we by then covered it with a space blanket because the temperatures were cooling off. You can also see that the vacuum reservoir at the end is a T-pipe, smaller reservoir than we have in the later videos. So the performance shown here is not quite as good, run 510 to 520 meters per second with air. So the basic setup is the, the same pressure chamber, pressure membrane, vacuum membrane, then the three meter, 10 foot long launch tube, vacuum reservoir, and then the final vacuum membrane that the ball breaks through. So this second slide shows the high speed flash image of the ping pong ball. There's three flashes. Each flash is a couple microseconds long and they're spaced 500 microseconds apart. The ball is traveling right to left, so there's 500 microseconds or half a millisecond from the right hand first image to the middle one and then another 500 microseconds from the middle image to the final one. You can see on the first flash where the ball is just breaking out of the final vacuum membrane. And then at the middle flash where you know, some piece of debris is going along with it. And then the left one where it's about to hit the bucket with rags to catch the ball. After doing that shot, we changed to two pieces of measuring tape taped to boards that straddle the path of the ping pong ball so we could get more accurate interpolation between the two positions. So here's again the same triple flash picture, ball traveling right to left. See it breaking out of the membrane and then in the middle 500 microseconds later and at the end on the left another 500 microseconds later. One thing to note here is that the, the distance between the first image and the middle one is a little bit longer than between the middle one and the final one. And that's because the ping pong ball, being only 2.7 grams, slows down very quickly in air. So the velocity on the right hand side is a little bit higher than it is on the left hand side. And then here's one more similar image with the triple flashes where we tried to reduce the glare, but also hit a little bit of the ruler. And then here's a similar thing with the triple flashes, again, half millisecond or 500 microsecond spacing. This time it's hitting a piece of hardy plank. So the right hand image of the ball is as it's breaking out of the final vacuum membrane. The middle one is just as it's hitting the hardy plank. It's half a millisecond later. And then the final flash shows bits of the hardy plank breaking out of the far side. And you can see bits of the ball bouncing back. All of these made clean holes through the hardy plank, even though some of the bits of the ping pong ball are bouncing back. It's a little hard to tell exactly what's what because there's no way to know for sure any bit of the image was exposed by the first flash or the second flash or the third flash. You can also see in this one the trip wire at the exit of the, the launch tube that we used to start the sequence of flashes. And then here's a, the final triple flash image. This time, the delay between the first two flashes is the same, but the delay between the second flash and the third flash was extended to one and a half milliseconds. So the debris has time to travel further. And here you can clearly see some of the debris going through the piece of hardy plank and some of the debris bouncing back. And then this is a schematic diagram of the ping pong ball launcher. And as the text says, if you decide to experiment with this, which we'd encourage, but use extreme caution, because not only are the 
supersonic ping pong balls hazardous and potentially lethal but pressure chambers can be dangerous too so as you saw in the first picture we not only have the schedule 80 cpvc the high temperature pvc which is rated well past the temperatures that were i mean well past yeah the temperatures as well as well past the pressures that we're using and then we wrapped it with the heavy nylon rope as an extra measure just in case it was a defective piece of pipe were to break the rope would hopefully contain the pieces and avoid injuring bystanders so in this diagram unlike the flash images the ping pong ball is traveling left to right so it starts with the pressure chamber which we used in the second two videos with air and helium not in the first one which was vacuum only at the end of the pressure chamber is a membrane a pressure membrane this membrane is 2 mil or 50, 50 micron thick mylar with an added layer of packing tape and between the packing tape and the mylar is a thin strand of copper wire we use that wire to trigger the release of the pressure so unlike other videos the ones we've referred to from Purdue University and, and the Mythbusters one as far as I know where they just increase the pressure until the membrane ruptures in this case we set the pressure pump it up to whatever the desired pressure and then run electricity through that wire which melts a path through the membrane breaks it open and triggers the launch of the ball although as you'll note in our final helium pressurized helium video the membrane happened to rupture before we intentionally triggered it so occasionally membrane does fail then right after the pressure membrane is a vacuum membrane they wouldn't need to be separate membranes in fact aren't in the Purdue version but we found it easier to get good seals using two separate membranes then a very short distance actually shorter than it looks in this image five to seven centimeters between that membrane and the ping-pong ball and a reduction from two inch PVC pipe well, I should back up the pressure chamber is four inch CPVC angled down to 2 inch CPVC and then the right hand side is all standard PVC pipe and going from 2 inch down to 1 and a half because the 1 and a half inch pipe inside diameter fits the 40 millimeter ping pong ball fairly well just a little bit of slop so then the 3 meter long 10 foot long launch tube and then probably our key innovation at the end of the launch tube we have this vacuum chamber because air leaks by the ping pong ball and both in the Purdue University videos and I, I believe in Mythbusters too they show evidence that it's the air that leaks past the ping pong ball that actually breaks the final vacuum membrane but in the process it's the ping pong ball compressing that air enough to break through the membrane which slows down the ping pong ball so when we add the vacuum chamber that gives a place for the air to go that leaks by the ping pong ball so that's not pushing back nearly as much on the ping pong ball so in our setup it's the ball that actually breaks the final membrane and that's a key to getting speed because if you'll notice Mythbusters claimed 1100 miles per hour and they were using 300 psi air a 20 foot long launch tube we have half the size machine and less than a third the pressure and have achieved faster speeds well, the, the pictures in this presentation were about 1150 miles per hour, five, 510 to 20 meters per second in the videos that we filmed later to try and set records. We got over 1200 miles per hour, and that's with air, and then with helium, much faster, 773 meters per second, which is a little over 1700 miles per hour. So the vacuum chamber is probably the, the key innovation and this whole design was a result of over 200 hours of building, experimenting, trying things, the, um, rejecting the things that didn't work as well. The other differences is we, we tried, as what we saw in the Purdue video, a number of different converging, diverging nozzles and found in the end that we had significantly better performance without using any diverging portion. So we just have the necking down from the two inch PVC pipe down to one and a half 
and keeping the ball as close to the pressure membrane as possible, so minimizing any delay and loss in pressure through that area. The final difference that we spent a bunch of time trying different membranes, because particularly the final vacuum membrane, which the ball has to break through, even when we have that vacuum chamber, that membrane wants to be just barely strong enough to hold up to the vacuum. And what we found after trying half a dozen different materials was that half mil mylar, 12 micron mylar, which happens to be space blanket, worked the best. It almost all the time holds up to the vacuum, but just barely, so it provides fairly minimal resistance for the ball breaking through at the end, because that is one more thing that slows down the ping pong ball. So if you're interested, have fun experimenting, but do be very careful because this is a dangerous hobby. Thank you for watching.